one or aptly titled how I got to this point so far uh, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, what was the behind the, the reason behind my design philosophy and so forth and uh, brief history it started out when I set up four foot by six foot beds these two and the plan was to duplicate these beds down the row about a foot apart each so I would have <clears throat> effectively about 10 times two planters or about 240 square feet and when I did the calculations that didn't really quite add up because there was a lot of wasted space between having rows between each planter and so forth so when I did the math and took the side the side um, planters and made them long with even two foot spaces between I almost I, I almost doubled the amount of um, raised bed uh, planting space in the same footprint <clears throat> so what we have here is uh, three foot four foot three foot with two two feet in between this is covered because I've got some early season peas in there and we had a little bit of cold snap so I kept those covered and there seemed just fine so the process for how we got to here is it was originally planned on just being raised beds and of course uh, early in the season you get the bug where you know I really want to get out there and do some planting so then I decided I was gonna get like little hoops over everything and cover them with plastic and so forth and as we got deeper into that it was just why don't we just build a nice hoop house so the process was you know lay it out with two four by six foot beds using ten foot long two by tens on both ends we have the same thing on the other end, two foot gap here, two foot gap there, two foot gap down. And that allows us to have a continuous skirt on the front and all the way down the side. Excuse that, that's part of the stuff that's keeping that, keeping that warm. All the way around, except for the places where we have the doorway. So that gives us a nice thermal seal along everything. Now I've had a couple of people ask me, why the wooden arch? And how did you do it? Well, when I was designing it, I was thinking about it, and just in the middle of the night, one night, it came to me. I said, why don't I make an arch out of wood? That way I'll have something to attach the plastic to that will hold the plastic secure, will give me some strength against bowing and blowing and drifting in the wind. And uh, I'll get to this here. You'll see that there's actually, this is the new bow. This is the original bow. The new bow, if you see, is just rock solid. You cannot compress it, move it at all. So that gives me a lot of strength when it comes time for you know windy days, which today it happened to be actually kind of windy. So what? How was? What was my deciding factor on how to make that bow? Well, what I did is I took some PVC pipe. This is three quarter inch. It's about actually almost an inch in diameter on the outside, and I laid my first comfortable hoop with plastic right on the edge of these the face of these these two beds, these two first beds. I actually started on the, the corner of this face and went up and over and as I did, as I figured out what that was and cut that first piece of plastic to length then I, I mimicked it with a piece of wood the first piece of wood and the wood is actually 3 8 inch thick by 24 feet long strips of it used to be a two by six i sliced them into in the, in the sections three eighths inches thick and i made six of those i just happened to have a piece of a 24 foot long piece of two by six that used to hold hold up the roof in that house i sliced off six of them and then i mimicked the shape of the plastic pipe with the first strip of wood now how i did that is I fastened this first block to this first raised bed. You can see it terminates right on this edge. And I screwed the first piece of wood to this block and then glued it really good. Then I started bending it up and around and I approximated the same arc as the plastic. I didn't get it exactly right, but that's okay. If you get it close, that's fine. Once it was attached on both ends and screwed, and glued very well then I put the uprights in and how I did that was basically I just picked you know about a two foot in between everything plumb them up from the bottom matched them to that arc drew a line and then cut them off straight cut it didn't have to be it didn't have to didn't have to follow the arc perfectly but it was a straight cut 
I screwed it in the bottom, leveled it again, plumbed it again, and then screwed that arc to that board and glued it. Um, with Tight Bond 3 glue, that's waterproof glue, that's definitely what you want to use. And I did that six times with exactly two feet between these two in the middle. And once that was, once that was in place and the screws were down through the top, I'd probably ask you to pre-drill the uh, bent wood, otherwise you'll split it. Pre-drill it and then put your screws in. The screws need to be flush. Uh, if, I, I recommend tapered screws and flush with the top of the wood. Once that first one was in, then I came back with my second piece of laminate and I glued it the whole length of the arc and then screwed it about every foot. And that held it in place to match the first arc. And I just let it set overnight. Um, when you're doing that, you need to match the length of the first board plus about another three quarters of an inch on the end because this board will be a little bit longer than the first one. So when you're doing that, what you need to do is you need to dig a little hole down here so because the board's gonna be a little bit longer, you stick it in the dirt a little bit, find out the length that matches, and then trim it off after you get it in place. Let it sit overnight, let the glue harden, come back the next day, take all the screws out that you have holding the two of them together, because what the screws do is, they stick through a little bit. I'm gonna take those out and then basically do it again the third time, or the, third, or the second time with the third piece of wood with a lot of glue between and uh, get to love these clamps. Get a handful of these clamps, get to know them, get to love them. You're going to need them to either assist you in getting things in place or to, uh, to hold things in place. And a couple pipe clamps, those are important on the end because the end is, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stress on the end here. You want to get this glued in really nicely to the starter board. This is a one by three by nine and a quarter inches. And then put in the third one and then screw the third one into the first and the second one all the way around while the glue sets. Leave that set overnight. When you come back the next day, you can pull all those screws out because the glue is going to hold them for the rest of their lives. And you will find that you have built yourself a nice wooden arc, arch. It's incredibly, incredibly stable. And it gives you a nice surface here to sandwich another piece of laminate on top of this with your plastic between the two. Plastic over the top. And another sandwich on here and a bunch of screws to hold that together. The plastic is going to stay in place. Now, what we have here, this is the second arch that I'm building that's going to be at the far end. I wanted to match the first one. So I started by putting another starter board here to match the first one. And then follow along with the same arch, arc to see if I could match pretty close the first one with the first piece of wood and then you see gonna have it lemon laminate two more on this first one which of course are these two down here and the one thing to remember is you're, you're matching for length not just for the shape but the length because down at the other end where I'm gonna put this it might be a little bit different in width but the pipes that cross over the top of the hoop house they're all the same length so if the width over there is a little bit wider than up here then when I move the second arch over to that end, it's going to be a little bit wider over there. It's just going to match the hoops anyway. So just I'm matching the first one and all these other pieces of PVC are all cut to the same length, which matched this first hoop. All right, what I've done here in order to help me match this is I've got these little blocks that I screwed here that follow the arc of the inner board. So I can clamp the outer board, the new one, to this and it stays just perfectly lined up as we go around to follow that to that arc. I've got this glued here. I've got it pretty closely lined up with the other one, plus or minus, it could be plus or minus an inch. I mean, this is a greenhouse, this is not the Taj Mahal. And what I'll do is I will then glue this seam, put a couple screws in here, and, by the, and pre drill these, please, otherwise, you'll split this. But even if you do split it, it's not going to matter because there's going to be so much glue in there. This is going to be rock solid. And I recommend a pipe clamp to hold this because it's going to take a little bit of force to squeeze out that little gap there. And then once it's glued, I'll trim down the length. And the length actually goes down about three inches too long. So once I got that in place and trimmed, 
in place, screwed and glued and screwed. Then we get one of these, and we trim it. And this is one of the best tools you can have for outdoor cutting work. The saws all work as well. Okay, so once I have that glued and a couple screws in it, I'll completely take it off this end of the greenhouse. I'll walk down to the other end and I'll screw the starter boards, that one and that one, to the far end, four by six boxes. And that'll be my starter hoop on that end. Once I get that done, then I'll add my uprights, plumbing them, gluing them at the top, and that'll give this first board on the other end, the first of the laminate board on the other end, some rigidity from doing stuff like this. And uh, I, could I could lay my first layer of glue in there and then uh, clamp in and then also screw my second laminate. Now, when you're working with laminates, at times you're gonna find them. I got lucky, I, there's not a lot of defects in this. This piece of wood is over 50 years old. But there's one of these. And when I go to bend that on the far end, that joint's going to snap in two. So what I'm going to have to do is estimate this length from there up to here. Find out where it matches on this arc. And then put about six feet of glue in the, from the center out each direction. And then lay that in at the center. Put it right here, put a couple screws each side of it, and that'll clamp it here with a pipe clamp. And then I can start my bends and not have to worry about the board splitting where it's got that defect. And really, once this gets hard and dry and, and all cured, these, these laminates are hard as a rock. They're not going anywhere. These I actually have I've had out in the rain for a couple weeks and they've actually softened up so they should be a little bit more flexible. Three eighths of an inch thick. The laminate that I put on top of here to clamp down the plastic, I'll probably make those a quarter inch thick and I'll pre-drill them so they want to put my screws. And I probably recommend pan head screws because you don't want to have um, flat head screws because they'll, they'll tend to split the wood if you have pan heads with maybe some, some uh, washers. They'll just clamp down on that and they won't spread the wood open and split it. Now, another couple ideas about building your greenhouse. Electric. It's a 10 gauge wire. Enough, uh, there's, three ga there's three connectors here for 240 volts. Half inch conduit goes actually, curves underneath this bed, very deep underneath the bed. Goes this direction and to the barn. Same thing here. Wawa, three quarter inch PVC. It goes down in there, goes way under the ground, curves around there. And this trench was actually kind of needed because we also trenched in the power from the solar cells through right underneath the garden here and we just had ourselves a wonderful fun trench day while we put that under the ground and then into the barn. And we'll, tap, we'll bring water from the barn which doesn't have water currently but any electric over here. And this will allow us lights and there's plenty of uh, conductor gauge here for up to 5,000 watts of heat. So we can hang an electric heater and keep the cat warm. All right, three foot, two foot, uh, four foot, two foot, three foot, about 14 feet wide, 50 feet long. We have hip boards here, and that actually is not the finished product. The finished product looks more like this. It's a one by four with a one by two, and I'll show you why we do that. Um, everything is. Everything PVC is pretty much clamped with saddle clamps just to uh, keep them in place. They, they're pretty rock solid. We'll have to wait and see over the, over the seasons if those hold up. They're easily replaceable. And if, of course, if, they, if the screws strip out, we can just move the clamp down a little bit. We're going to put two by fours horizontally between these. So that'll give us a flat surface to attach our plastic. We're using one by two, and I'll, I'll give you an ex example of what we're doing. The plastic will come down, obviously, to the top of this surface. This is the one by two, this is the one by three, or the one by four. Rather. It'll come down this surface, and it'll drop down, and 
we'll sandwich the plastic with another one by three, one by two here. And screw this one by two to one by four. So we're, we're actually sandwiching the plastic between the two to keep it from pulling out. And of course, we could always just take the, the plastic and staple this to this, but anybody who's done plastic knows that staples last about a week before the plastic rips up and then you're done. So we're sandwiching things there. We're going to sandwich things on the arc with uh, obviously a bendable. We're going to take the plastic on the front and fold it over the arch so it'll also be in that sandwich. And we'll do the same thing on the far end. Now this hip board is pretty straight. I've got a, lot, a little bit of drift out of there. i got to take out of there. But again, this is a greenhouse. This isn't the Taj Mahal. And the same thing. This is this. I did this side first, and you can see that it goes all all over the place. Nice, yeah. Rolling river. We'll get we'll we'll we'll, we'll adjust that out. Maybe run a string the length of this once I put up the other end and get everything so it's nice and taut. Additionally, we're going to run a rib right down the center. And that rib will not only keep the tubes from doing this, but it'll also keep them from going back and forth, which there's not a lot of play since I put those side pieces on. Two by fours. We're going to go from this side of the box straight up to meet that rib. So that'll also give it some longitudinal and some transverse stiffness. Those two by fours will also have a cross piece to go across about six and a half feet high so we don't hit our head. And from there we'll run pipes down the length of the greenhouse to be able to run twine to take our climbing plants, which will be mostly in the middle. So they'll be able to climb. Additionally, I'm thinking about running also a, 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 a sprinkler line down the center here and put misting heads so that it's something that's real hot. I can run a, a very fine mist, keep the temperature down. That's a, another benefit. And also, additionally, I'm going to run a, a 50 feet length of Unistrut and put some little wheelie trolleys on that so I can daisy chain my garden hose and be able to slide it down the length and do my watering. I'm not going to put a central irrigation system. I'm just going to come through and, and water with a hose. The benefit of that is if you got to water, you got to weed. And hopefully weeding is only going to be the first season since we're going to be sealing it up. Now we're going to attach the plastic at, at waist high. And we're determined like halfway through the season if we want to attach the plastic on the bottom or if we want to be able to roll it up and get some air flow in here when it gets real hot. It's all dependent on how hot it gets, how the mister does, how many, how often we want to have it open so the weed seeds blow in and how often we want to have it open so that bugs and critters want to get in and we have the maintenance of coming out to raise the sides twice a day, raise them in the morning, take them down at night. All right, another benefit I just I figured out about this is the angle of the sun in early April, about 56 degrees. In the middle of June, it's 74 degrees. So the sun coming in, we want to make sure that these three boxes get sun as much as possible. Between those two degrees of 56 and 74, because of this two foot space here, this angle here and this angle here, 56 there, 74 there, there is a sweet spot right about here. It's about three feet up from this surface. There's a sweet spot here and a sweet spot right over there. That if I was to put a shelf the entire length of this center section and the entire length of that section, I could put a foot wide shelf the entire length and none of that shelf will shade this or this or this. A shelf on this side and a shelf on this side. And that shelf can be used foot wide shelf times 30, uh, 40, uh, six, uh, 38 feet. That's how long the center section, 38 feet. A shelf 38 feet here, a shelf 30, 40 feet here, 30, 42 feet here. 12 feet wide is all a bunch of extra growing room for potted plants, for seed starters, for tools, for knickknacks. <clears throat> and at no time between the 1st of April and the last of September will the shadow from those shelves cast on here or here or here. Wonderful. I love that idea. So, yeah, I'll be getting a shelf. 
down here. We're going to do some mulch down through this. Act. We actually have some dirt down there that I have to take and rake this way because out at the far end, the planters are all on the same plane, but the ground slopes down about three or four inches at that end compared to this end. So I've got some fill dirt down there. I'm going to drag through these two aisles and we'll put some, we'll put some mulch. Mulch around the water and start to grow. That's Greenhouse 101. If you're interested in a bill of materials, I probably could put something together. I wasn't, like I said, I started out by wanting to put raised beds and ended up putting two by tens inside and covering it. I have a feeling that the next time I do something like this, depending on the price of the plastic to cover it, I found some bargains on some plastic that, by the way, the plastic for this is 25 feet wide, even though the hoops are about 23 and a half feet or 20, yeah, pretty close to that. And I bought 70 feet long, the hoop house is 50 foot, and 50 foot almost exactly, I bought 70 feet, so I have enough plastic to cover both ends with the spare that I cut from the top. But the next hoop house that I've already, <laughs> already got in plans will probably not have raised beds. They will probably have planks down for walking so that all the other dirt around it won't get compressed. And the planks will probably be removable and the hoops will probably be a little bit taller so I can get the tractor inside of it and run the rotor tiller through it a couple times during the season. But this hoop house is planned with heat and water to hopefully grow year round. Uh, cold weather crops over winter, uh, your spinaches, your peas, your carrots, your legumes, and uh, probably beginning in February, we'll start seed si uh, seed starters for our warm weather vegetables, our tomatoes, our peppers, our what have you. That is Hoop House 101. I'm running out of daylight here. I want to glue this second. I'm going to glue this beginning of the end wall to my starter blocks, get this unscrewed, move it down there. And if I can get my uprights put up before it gets too late, that'll be a good start for tomorrow, which will be day one of laminating the second piece. Once that's done, we'll do the third piece. And actually, if you probably wait about an hour between the pieces, they're probably glued well enough together. They're not going to go anywhere. Start your third piece, glue it together. And then uh, I need to finish the hip boards on the far end. And then we'll be ready for the center, for the center, the spine down the center and the top. That's going to be a little bit of a trick because it's about eight feet tall in the center. And it's not going to be an easy way to put a ladder over there, over this. So um, we'll wait and see. All right, that's Greenhouse 101. I'll probably have updates. Thanks for watching.